What's up everybody? Welcome back. I'm Alice and you're watching on Le Lifestyle. This week we have Hati Tutunjan from Thadik Streetwear with us. And we're going to be talking about basically how she came up with Thadik and her journey as an entrepreneur. So welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy you're here with us. Uh, we both have our drinks, so you guys should grab a drink. Surge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's start with a very, very basic. Who is Patti? <laughs> Who is Patti? That's a very loaded question. Um, so I was actually born and raised in Syria, Aleppo, um, and we moved to Canada back in 2011 uh, with my family, with my immediate family. And uh, when I came here, you know, you're kind of um, in, 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 in Syria, I was very involved with the Armenian community and everything that we were doing, you know, it's integrated into your life. There's a community. It's, it's uh, I went to an Armenian school and did a lot of activities, um, like extracurricular activities with the Armenian community. Um, with that said, when you move, there's obviously a different uh, your prior priorities start shifting and I was also at, at, at the teenage age I was 17 and um, you know I was trying to figure out who I am how do I how would I belong in this in this new world of mine um, and kind of diving right into everything that I could be doing whether it's working or going to school and figuring out what I want to do after school which changed multiple times and then I found myself in a career um, in marketing actually that I was in for about five years and while I was in that Russian kind of just go 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 and trying to figure everything out I felt like I was kind of racing with myself um, to to get to a place where I didn't even know what that place is I was just trying to rush a race towards something that I didn't even know what it was um, so after being in that in that world for about five years I decided to take a step back and figure out what's my purpose? What am I doing? What am I spending over 40 hours a week doing? Um, and what does it, what does it serve? What purpose does it serve? Um, and that's when the harsh reality hit me a little bit where I felt a little bit lost. And I finally faced the idea that I think I need a shift in the trajectory of what's going on in my life. And what better way to do that than to just get a one-way ticket and go to Armenia to volunteer. So I recently, during that time, heard about the organization called Birthright Armenia, which very interestingly enough, their slogan is Journey of Self-Discovery, which resonated with me so much because I'm like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I need um, a change of phys physical environment that will allow me to kind of change the, the, my mindset or, you know, figure out what my mindset even is. So um, at the end of 2018, I actually, December 28th, when I landed in Armenia, um, and I went, the reason why I went with a one-way ticket is because I didn't want to put a timeline on how long do I need to find my purpose or how long do I need to, to find myself. So I wanted to make sure that it could be a week, it could be a year, it could, so I, that was kind of like the whole mindset behind it to not have a timeline because I felt like the past nine years that I've been living in Canada, I always was on this timeline that I only put for myself. Nobody else pressured me into this timeline. I just was racing with myself for, for no reason at all. So that timeline for me turned out to be about a year, a year and a half, a little over a year. Um, and what I did during that time is because I was volunteering, I actually started an online business um, that wasn't necessarily Armenian related or revolved around Armenianness. Uh, but I wasn't passionate about it. I was working on it and I was doing you know like every time there would be a, a customer reaching out or there would be an interaction or a transaction or any of that it was very business kind of oriented and th again I felt that I was falling back into the world that I left behind that was um, that was lacking the purpose so then I kind of and the concept of the whole business that I had prior was also very similar so then I started meeting all these amazing creative Armenians uh, Armenian artists in Armenia that I've worked with and the first one the first artist that I worked with uh, the Armenian artist was Anahid of Erepuni so when I created her collection on this previous website that I had I found that it had a different meaning. Every time there was any kind of action happening with this, with this collection, it had a very different meaning than the other ones. 
And that's when I started kind of sitting on the idea where, wait a minute, this is what I want to be doing because the layers that is it, it, that it has with, with this collection is so many, other than supporting the Armenian artists, other than integrating you know, our culture and our story into our everyday life through streetwear, that felt so good to me. So when I came back, I actually arrived back in March uh, um, to Canada. So in April, I said April 1st is the date where Daddy will be launched. So 2020 April 1st is when Daddy was launched. This is actually something not a lot of people maybe know about Daddy. Some assume that it was there for longer, but it was actually April 1st of this year um, that it was launched. And of course, I didn't think that the, the world will be what it is when I did launch it with, with the pandemic and the war and everything that happened after. And also everybody also had things going on in their personal lives. But in a way, Way, I felt that everything I've learned in the past, you know, even in my career and the, 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 the business I had prior, what I've learned in Armenia, everything was in a way kind of leading to this point. I had to learn everything I've learned with the other projects and everything else I've done with my life to be able to kind of support during these times. Actually, I just wanted to like go back to Birthright Armenia. Uh, mm -hmm which is, by the way, Birthright Armenia is available to all Armenians around the world, especially yeah. for those who want to better their um, language, as in speaking-wise. I don't know about writing, but uh, you'll p definitely pick it up when you're there, and you'll be visiting Armenia, so it's a plus if you've never been. Yeah. Um, so I really wanted to go back to the point where you said you kind of started a business there. So how did Birthright directly change your views towards like where you want to go so the idea of being part of birthright armenia um and to answer your question yes um you do like you you can take armenian classes while you're there and their whole idea is that you get integrated into the day-to-day -day of armenia uh, so not necessarily you don't feel like you're a tourist, but you're actually working with locals. You're you're going on excursions. You're entering people's homes who are very very generous and and hospitable, as we all know about Armenians. So it 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 allows you to see life from a completely different point of view. You're also surrounded by a lot of like-minded people who are there for similar reasons, if not exactly the same reason. But um, there's always at a time about like over 50 volunteers in country with you from around the world and you start seeing that you're not alone in you know being in the diaspora you're not alone with the with the ideologies that you have or the point of view of you have or how you identify yourself as an armenian in the diaspora especially in a community where uh, for example it's different how i felt in syria being an armenian because i was born there i was born into the armenian community it's different when you move and you go to a different place at a different age and you're maybe it's not as easy to integrate as quickly as possible so it was very interesting to see that i wasn't alone in that and i that's when i started feeling there is a need for us to start feeling unified through different projects that are happening and if those projects are happening you know on the online world, then it's even better because then you have that opportunity to connect um, no matter where you're logistically or physically located. So in a sense, it changed my, my mind in that way that I felt a sense of belonging, which is very ironic that my sense of belonging exists in now kind of, I, I don't like calling it virtual because it's interesting that like, people associate, you know, like online with virtual, but to me, I, I'm trying to also find that solid sense of belonging and community even if it's if it is online so i think the main takeaway for me i would say if i have to summarize it in one sentence from birthright armenia is that it allowed me to shift my mindset to realizing that i'm empowered to reach out to any armenian or around the world no matter where they are and connect with each other and see if we can collaborate with each other and put something out there that benefits all of our you know our future um and our homeland so i think that kind of is the rooted or embedded idea behind behind daddy is that i'm collaborating with artists from around the world that i've never even met before and we're putting something out there that currently is benefiting um our our homeland and our you know the our reality so when then, did you specifically come up with the idea for daddy like I was mentioning before, there was a event that I had right prior to Daddy that was not Armenian focused. And then I switched it as soon as, so I, I was kind of like thinking about it as soon as I started collaborating with Ana Hidovera Puni, which was December of 2019. And then 
it was kind of in my in my mind until I arrived back to Canada early March, and that's when it was like, okay, it needs to happen. These are the steps I need to take to make that happen, and then by April first, it will be launched as Dadig. And the name honestly just came to me so naturally, and um, it was obviously inspired by all the very strong Dadigs in in Armenia that I've met. Just how inclusive they are and how loving they are, and but very also strong and very you know. So I just it was just such a it was two a.m. actually. I was sitting on my couch and was like, that's it. That's the name. That's what needs to happen. You know, one of those things that you're like grab and like turn on the lights and take take a take a notepad and start writing down all the steps so that's basically how it all happened so it was march of 20, 2020 uh, i i love it when you're just like sitting there um not even trying to think and the ideas just come to you and it's like it's god sent <laughs> like and, and you always I was meant to think this yeah and you're like why did i not do this until now like and it just seems so it just makes sense from all the aspects and that's that's when you know you're up to something and you start feeling anxious and nervous and excited and all the everything all together yeah it's amazing i love it your journey was basically going to Armenia, self-discovery and coming from that you came up with Dothik. You started this year, and I'm super impressed that you started this year. And for in my eyes, it is as big as everyone else thinks. Even, you know, you're behind the scenes, you know how big it is. But, like, as a person just found out, like, I wouldn't say just, but, like, during, during quarantine, we're all on our phones, and we find Dothik Streetwear, um, it felt like it was a huge um, operation, I want to say, even though that's not the right word. But how big? I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how big is that actually <laughs> right now, as of today? Um. So I think it it it's based on what you define. You know being big is I think um, the main focus for me is putting the artist on the platform and you know focusing on telling the stories of the artists so what I want to kind of continue on like what I would say is I'm working towards is having more and more artists because then we will have more voices we will have more storytelling which um, during the war actually um, so generally we have about nine artists on the store um, and then we're trying to grow that number and then during the war when we started the fund fundraiser collection um we've had over 40 artists contributing and the like the way everybody came together and submitted and donated their art for the fundraiser collection that unity that's something i want to carry on through the store moving forward so i think um for me i will just continue to focus on that part and um i know that there's a lot more artists out there that i haven't discovered yet so i think there's a lot more work to be done still and and working towards that um and continuing to focus on telling the stories of the artists so right now for example we're doing live interviews with the artists on our instagram page and that's basically to bring because it's always you know art is very creative and it's it's always open for uh, interpretation so what better way to do it than to bring on the artist itself who produced it to tell the story behind it so i would say in that sense we still have a lot a lot of work to 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 do uh, i'm happy that you're finding the the website and you know like whatever you see like the experience of of um, being on the website, you know, good enough to say that you feel like it's big. I appreciate, I really appreciate that. But obviously there's a lot more work to be done in terms of um, getting more artists on board, growing the community and reaching more people in terms of like integrating our story and culture into everybody's day-to-day -day life. So yeah, like there's a lot more work to be done to grow that community uh, of artists, but also grow the the reach of um, integrating our culture and history into into many different homes even non-armenians and get them introduced into our culture um through the art that is um that the artists are you know producing so a lot more work to be done so that kind of brings me to my next question which is like what is your objective within the Armenian community? Mm -hmm. i think for me it's very important and creative platform um that a lot like everybody can join in and uh express themselves and everybody can kind of it's it's i want it to be an experience that um like you were saying during quarantine you're on your phone you discovered a website and i want that to be an experience in a sense where it transforms you into a space where you can you know 
not even shopping, but also just observing the artwork and reading the stories of the artists and feeling connected, feeling that sense of belonging that I felt when I was in Armenia volunteering with all these um, amazing Armenians uh, and even non-Armenians from around the world that are like-minded. So just creating that experience for me, that platform that feels like an experience, um, uh, especially now that we're all kind of locked in our homes, that I think to me is the biggest fulfillment. So when people kind of send messages saying that, I just keep going and browsing sometimes on the website just for fun. I want to see what's new. That to me already makes me feel very much, you know, happy and fulfilled. So that kind of is the goal, the, the having the platform of it, the experience of it. The next few questions are more going to be about like, about you and how you grew up into this person. Um, so first off, do you see yourself as an entrepreneur? Um, I never really thought about it that way, um, and I never really think about it that way. I think I see myself more as a as a connector or someone who's creating a platform for um, storytelling or, you know, someone that brings people together. That's amazing that you actually see it that way because it, almost everyone who had a different kind of journey will come into an entrepreneur, like a businesswoman position, and not consider themselves as one until like many years on the road when they've done so many interviews or they've talked about themselves so much that they're like, okay, fine. Here's, here's. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for most people, when they come up with like um, a project that they really, really ha are passionate about, they always think of it as a exactly that, a fun, project that they end up being oh. yeah <laughs> right it, it was never like oh this is my business and I thought of it because I wanted to run a business it never flows that way which is so amazing uh, that even you yourself don't see yourself um, necessarily as an entrepreneur but more like a storyteller which almost I think everyone who once wanted to become an entrepreneur will say now they're like more of a storyteller or a connector mm -hmm. bringing two people or one item and another person together because you know that was the goal. Yeah, and it's interesting you say that because um, a lot of people like when they email me or reach out for a question or anything, um, they a lot of times people say, I'm so sorry I'm bothering you or I know you're busy. I'm like, this is the favorite part of this entire project is that I want to connect with everybody around the world. So you're reaching out is basically what I love the most about this entire thing. So please reach out, even if you're just saying hi, even if you have feedback, even if whatever it is, or if you want to tell me a story or say something, anything that is, I love that. That's the favorite part. And, and I think um, the, that also serves the whole idea of I, I want to make sure that what I'm doing full time is also something I'm passionate about I'm, I fulfills my purpose that I felt now, which is to make people feel welcomed and, you know, put a smile on someone's face every single day. So it's like, if I, if I can achieve that through something that happens to be a business, that that's great. But I never look at it from that angle of like, this is a business and it's, you know, there's profit and there's this, that's why when you also ask me how big is it, I can't quantify how big it is the only you know there's so much more stories to be told and that's what i keep seeing i don't see i don't necessarily look back and say where i am now i just look at where i could be and where i should be and where i should what i should also include more people more artists more you know grow that community so that's how i kind of see it so just to again touch back on a few things that you mentioned in the beginning um were there any books you read or is there a routine you follow for personal development mm -hmm. Um, I think it's interesting because I never, you know, sometimes you're not aware of those moments of self growth or, you know, some, uh, you kind of carry a life and then things happen through that life that, you know, that are moments of shock that in the, in, like at the beginning then it pushes you out of your comfort zone into a moment of growth, but you're not, you didn't even think about it or, you know, go after it. I think as a kid, um, I've, I've always been a chess player. Um, I played chess since I can remember. And it was something that I've done professionally back in, back in Syria. Um, I've also like, my parents always pushed me to kind of into activities that allow for growth and strategic planning and thinking without even realizing that that's what I was doing as, as a kid, you know, like you're not thinking that this is why I'm playing chess. 
Um, so I've played uh, classical music as well, which really also allowed me to connect with my inner self. I'm not a very, very, I don't look at myself as a very creative person in the traditional sense of creativity, I guess. But um, I guess we're all creatives in the things that we put into the world, right? So we're creating something, we're putting something out there. So I think not realizing my, my th those are the things that parents, my the things that my parents really encouraged me to do as a kid helped me um, get to this point. But also, um, I do love reading books. I do, lo I do love reading um, self-development books. But I think I was doing that um, more when I was stuck in that routine of, you know, the nine to five job or going to school. And I was seeking, um, not organically seeking growth. And I think when I grew more is when I dropped that and I was following my purpose and growth kind of came with that, which is when I went to Armenia. I wasn't necessarily, and that's why I'm saying not organically with not like reading the books is amazing and it does really help you. But also when you, you know, something needs to change and you know that something needs to grow and you're seeking it, it's, it's not as effective when you actually just kind of go after it and experience it and let the growth follow. Um, so I think that was the shift that happened for me. And I mean, I don't know if this answer made any sense, but I hope I was able to kind of um, share the idea that's in my head right now that, you know, it's, it's always, it's, for me, it's always been by experiencing, by seeing, by integrating um, that I've grown more than by, you know, being by myself and knowing that I need to learn something. So um yeah, and I think all the difficulties or, or the, all the experiences that I've had through my life are the ones that led me to this point. So I'm sure that there were a lot of even moments of growth that I didn't realize that they were, um, like I said, through experience. Amazing. I definitely understand what, what you're trying to get at, and um, it definitely makes sense. So is there a specific routine? What's your routine? Actually, what is your routine currently? When you wake up, what's the first thing you do? Okay, so I'm actually guilty of being glued to my phone. Um, and I think that comes from maybe the passion that I have through talking to the community. I, I don't even call them customers because it, it is it is a community. So I think I'm very much guilty of always being glued to my phone. So as soon as I wake up, I, I grab my phone and I want to see who messaged me, who, who's talking to me. I want to talk to them and connect with everybody. So that's definitely something that I'm working on finding the balance. Um, so I'm a huge coffee drinker as well. Like, have to have the surge. Um, so the first thing I do is always make my surge and, um, and I, and I start working pretty much immediately. And then I find that I've worked basically all day and realize that, wait a minute, I need also a moment to recharge. But, um, the times that I take for myself, I love running. It's something that I've, I've started doing what since quarantine started, which now feels like forever ago. Um, so I really, really enjoy kind of just going for a night run, which could, go up to an hour, an hour and a half sometimes. And those are the times where I'm kind of maybe even listening to a podcast and, or, you know, taking a little break, but also I find that it recharges me that when I come back, I can also continue working and continue talking to everybody and continue connecting. But right now it's been very much, especially the past, obviously a month and a half with the, with the fundraiser. Um, it's been a huge priority during my day. So it's the focal point for me to, you know, do everything that I can to maximize that the funds that we can send to Armenia. So it's been for the past month and a half, my routine has been basically that. Uh, but I can say running is the one thing that I do common thread between all my days that allows me to just kind of take a breather and, and recharge to keep going because it's, it's a marathon. And that's amazing that you say that you start working as soon as you wake up and then you do everything else. It's so that everyone understands it's totally normal to have an unconventional routine um, because you just have to do whatever works for you, right? Like most people yeah. will say, oh, you have to wake up super early, do your workout, don't eat until like maybe noon, you break your fast then and then you kind of work and I just like see. No, my, I think my routine is very much led by passion versus you know routine or what's right and wrong. I'm not saying my routine is right but even like the word routine doesn't necessarily fit into my vocabulary because I wake up and based on what has happened while I was sleeping I then kind of take my day from there so it's very it's very much right now this is the focal point of my whole day so anything that happens I um, sometimes it's proactive sometimes it's a reaction to something that is happening you know sometimes we'll get news about something so 
what my life is currently is very much impacted by everything that's going on around us and in, in Armenia. So that's kind of what I, yeah, I don't have necessarily like, I, I'm not someone that will give any advice on what's a healthy routine or anything like that, because for me right now, I'm still working. Like I was saying to, I started in April and since then it's been, um, you know, adjusting and adapting to what is the need of our community and kind of putting, making my output match with that, serve that purpose. So whether it was the start with the COVID and, and everything and then the war, I, I, I can't say that I'm at a place right now where I have found the balance between my personal life and the work and all of it. So it's kind of right now, my personal life is also this and it, it, it really helps because I'm very passionate about it. So it's not that I don't see it as work in a sense, but it's like, I wake up and I hang out with everybody on social media and through emails and through the, through, you know, with the artists and all of that. So for now, I can't say I can give any type of, you know, routine related uh, insights because there's none. But then again, uh, to have each their own, because whatever works for you works for you, it probably won't work exactly. for else. So it's all good. Um, okay, you did mention that you have read some books. Any books that you recommend anyone to read? I would say that the one book that I always find myself referencing or leaning back on um, is the emotional intelligence book. Um, and this is something have you have it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Because it's, it's, it's obviously one thing to read um, stories of other, you know, whether it's businessmen or companies or, you know, all this like self-development books. But what I find about the emotional intelligence book is I was introduced to it by my mentors uh, in my previous career. And I, it, it changes, it's a mindset. It's not necessarily, you know, a, a case study or anything that you read. It's, and you kind of know that now, or it's an example, but it really changes your mindset of how you approach everything and how can you continue being consistent through times of adversity, right? So, uh, which we experience a lot of uh, in our life. Like, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even tell you how much that, you know, skill, and it's a skill that you need to continue working on and continue developing. And I'm by no means at a place where I can consider myself, you know, I'm, you know, I have nothing more to learn from emotional intelligence, but it's something that I always find that I lean back on and um, think about and I, you know, use in my day-to-day -day life. So if, if someone wants to read one, one book, I would say definitely the, emo it's literally called emotional intelligence. Like that's the book. Maybe you can link it in the, in the description after it's, it just helped me so much throughout anything I've done in my personal career, anything, any project that I've ever worked on. Yeah. We'll definitely link it in the description below. Um, you could definitely buy it at uh, Indigo, I believe chapters. In yeah. 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 Indigo. Yeah. Amazing. So to basically wrap this up and bring it to the final question, Pati, <laughs> what is next for Tati? Or better yet, what's next for Pati? Oh, that's a very good question. Do any of us know what's next for us? <laughs> Uh, no, but in all seriousness, I think it's very important for me now to continue um, connecting with more artists and continue introducing the artists and uh, really, really shift my focus um, to putting the artists on the platform of letting them tell the story. So it will be very important. You will see a few changes on the, the, the layout of how the website is or even the focus of any of our social channels uh, and what is put out there. Um, we'll have to do a little bit more of revolving focusing on the artists and telling their story because I think um, a lot of times we hide hide behind posts or we hide behind statements what I really want to focus on is putting that human touch that element um, and and working on that and connecting people through that I want people to know are the artist names and I want them to know the stories. I want them to know what's behind it. In my personal life, I've also been, and we, we've, we've connected through that as well with you, is that I'm trying to focus a lot on supporting other Armenian businesses and putting the spotlight on them. And the reason why behind that was because I want people to see the faces of where these businesses are coming from. I want people to see, you know, not just hide behind the logo or the brand, but also have that personal touch. So I will be kind of tr translating that same thing or projecting that same mindset into Dadi and making sure that in everything I do, I'm putting the artists first. Um, yeah. And I want to get to know more artists. So please, if you guys know any artists or you are an artist, send, come my way, um, connect with me. Uh, growing that community is what will be my priority. I'm super excited to 
keep up and uh, see where this goes. I am so happy that we met through here and whatever happened, uh, we've gone through a lot of ups and downs, even though we've a lot. It's <laughs> yeah. So I'm really excited for what's to come for you. I hope God gives you everything that you've ever wanted. Um, and so to wrap this up, uh, thank you so much for joining me today, Fatil. If you want to check out Static Streetwear, it's static.ca, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll find cool stuff like this. And what you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely check it out. And her Instagram is? At static underscore streetwear. Awesome. So check it out. Is there anything else you want to add? No, I just want to say thank you for doing this and thank you for all the work you are doing, um, supporting Armenian businesses and connecting people also, not just not just the one-time support, but you're connecting, you're putting the spotlight on them, you're you know creating awareness about everything. So thank you for doing that and thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. Um, all right, guys, so that's it for this week. I hope you got some value out of this um, interview. And definitely don't forget to check out Thotic Streetwear, their website and Instagram. You better follow because I'm watching you. <laughs> um, thank you. All right. Thanks again. Um, don't forget to subscribe because we post videos every Wednesday. <laughs> I subscribe, so. Peace. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Uh-huh. Zoom, zoom. Yeah, I mean, what can we do? Yeah. Zoom lagging. Don't hate me. Excuse yeah. the, the poor quality. Yeah. Uh, okay, start over. Um, oh, you left. There you go. You're back. Okay, we lost the host. We lost the host. <laughs> okay, Fatih, focus, focus. Okay, we got this. And it's funny because when I laugh or smile, my earphones like come out. I don't know why. It's like it's kind of, I don't know. I have weird ears. <laughs> this is turning into a fun situation. Okay. Does that make sense? We can try it because I think I got what you're saying. <laughs> right, let me try it again. Let me try it. Okay. And... <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Watch my face.